Welcome to Spine Guy. I'm Dr. Brian Sue, a fellowship trained spine surgeon in Marin, California. The Spine Guy is a channel dedicated to making the complex spine simple for patients to understand. Today we'll be talking about the symptoms and the x-ray MRI findings related to one of the most common things I see in the clinic, which is lumbar degenerative disc disease. I'll be posting new videos weekly, so hit the subscribe button to catch them as they come out. The lumbar spine, the low back, as we've previously talked about, is composed of bones connected by discs, and the discs again are like jelly donuts, there's a jelly inside and a hard donut outside. Over time, as people age, everybody gets degenerative disc disease. All degenerative disc disease really is, is when the jelly in the jelly donut starts to dry up and deteriorate. Degenerative disc disease, as you can imagine, runs the entire spectrum from a little bit of fluid loss to more fluid loss, and as the disc grinds and grinds, the disc, which is the cushion between the bone and the shock absorber, starts to become flatter and flatter. And as a result, the bones get closer and closer. And ultimately, patients can develop back pain because the bones start to rub on themselves. The rubbing of the bones ends up causing inflammation of the bone, which then translates to back pain. So before we talk about actually diagnosing degenerative disease and what it looks like on the MRI, I think it's very important for people to understand that almost 90% of people over the age of 65 will have degenerative disc disease. Just because you see degenerative disc disease, which is a radiographic diagnosis, meaning you diagnose it on MRI, doesn't mean it's necessarily causing pain. This is a good example of a patient on the left-hand side of the screen who has the beginning onset of degenerative disc disease. So we've previously gone over how to read an MRI of the lumbar spine on, the, on other episodes, but just as a reminder, here's a side view of the back, back, belly, back, belly. The bottom bone here is the sacrum. This bone is L5. Again, the bones are named by number, L5, L4, L3, L2. And the discs are the names by the bones that sandwich it. So that's the L5S1 disc, L4-5, L3-4, L2-3. Here's a really great example of a completely perfect normal looking disc. There's a jelly inside here and it shows up as bright. And there's a hard donut outside here, shows up as dark. So at L4-5 and L5S1, you'll see that this jelly's lost a little bit of height. This is kind of the first stages of degenerative disc disease. As degenerative disc disease progresses, the cushion gets flatter and flatter, and as a result, the bones get closer and closer. And something that's really important to see here is that as the bones get closer and closer together, they rub, and as they rub, the bones get inflamed. That inflammation is seen as whiteness in the bone. And the particular image you wanna look at is the STIR, it's called the STIR, and your surgeon may show you that, and that will become relevant later on when it comes to diagnosing the disc is a source of pain. Patients with lumbar degenerative disc disease typically present with axial low back pain, meaning most of the pain is usually just across the low back. Because when you sit straight up in a chair, pressure gets put on the disc up and down. Patients in general with degenerative disc disease tend to feel better when laying flat and not so good when sitting. I can always tell a patient that has degenerative disc disease in my office because they don't feel like sitting. They don't like to sit to drive, they don't like to sit to watch movies for a long period of time, and that's pretty much the hallmark of degenerative disc disease. The other thing we sometimes see with degenerative disc disease is something called foramenal stenosis. Stenosis, you remember, just means narrowing, and the foramen is the location of the nerve. So here again is the side of the low back back, butt, belly. In this patient, there's really severe degeneration at the L5-S1 disc. And by the way, most disc degeneration occurs at L5-S1 and you see the inflammation in the bone here. What happens is, as the disc becomes flatter and flatter and narrower and narrower, you get what's called up-down compression of the nerve. So here's a nerve trying to come out and the nerve at the L5-S1 level is the L5 nerve. The L5 nerve goes down the butt, down the back of the leg, to the foot. So some patients with degenerative disc disease, particularly L5-S1, will get a compressed L5 nerve and feel buttock and leg pain. This is a good look at the same patient's foramen. So just to remind you, this is called a parasagittal view, which is a side view. There's a bone disc bone and here's a nerve coming out at you. Here's a normal nerve and you see the cross section of the nerve with the fluid around the nerve. Here's a nerve at L5S1 and because of the compression you're getting up down compression of this nerve. 
So another fairly common complaint of patients with degenerative disc disease is a pinched L5 nerve, which presents as sciatica. There are a couple of ways to treat lumbar degenerative disc disease non-operatively. The first thing is to make sure that there's nothing else causing low back pain. Low back pain comes from many things, muscles, ligaments, discs, nerves, joints, etc. I always tell patients, if somebody tells you they know exactly what's causing your low back pain, they probably don't know enough about the spine. I know a ton about the spine, and even I'm guessing, they're really educated guesses, but they're still guesses nonetheless. So before really focusing on the disc as a source of the pain, everything else has to be ruled out, and there are different ways to do that with injections, physical therapy, etc. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click the like button and leave questions or feedback in the comment box below. Feel free to let me know what videos you'd like to see in the future.